even though it's outside, even though it's in the in the countryside. It just goes to show you, you don't need to live with rats. It's a fallacy. People, we hear it all the time. I live in the countryside. I've got to live with rats. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. No one's got to live with rats. Finito with a ratto. No more. That's what you need to be, isn't it? Licorice all sorts. Wow, what a bright, sunny morning it is for December. We're on our way over to uh, a new rat-free lifetime guaranteed job that we're doing in Worcestershire this time. This one's a little bit different though. What we've got on this job is rats running around outside and it's rural. So a lot of the work that we do is in towns and cities as you've probably seen from our other videos. This won't be anything out of the ordinary for us, but we're gonna make a film about it because it is a little bit different. Like I say, 95% of our work is in towns and cities, but this is uh, proper, proper rural. And we're actually covering two houses with the rat free lifetime guarantee two separate guarantees two separate houses two separate people living in there and don't forget they'll be covered for the lifetime that they live in that property a risk-free no worry money back guaranteed system where if we haven't solved this problem in eight weeks they can say to us we want our money back that's how honest we are that's how certain we are about what we do and if the rats were re to return Basically, all we ask is another eight weeks. But it'll never take that long with us. You watch, you'll see, you'll see. We'll have this place rat free. I'm gonna say three weeks. And this is the best bit, finance as well, we're actually organizing. If you're watching this video, you've probably had rats for a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years even we go to sometimes. And we're not happy with that. You shouldn't be going through that. You need the experts in. Get it done, one payment, all done, finito with a ratto. No more. That's what you need to be, isn't it? So keep watching. This one could be an interesting one for us too. And we hope you enjoy it. I'm not going to say like and subscribe, because you should already be subscribing. As I was saying, we're uh, quite rural today, out in uh, the leafy glades of uh, Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Uh, loads of sheep here, they're not a problem. But what is a problem for this couple of houses is the fact that there's a big rat problem. Now they've got everything going on here. So the first thing we've got here that's a problem and a lovely breeding ground ground for rats is this massive compost heap. Rats love a compost heap. Over the back of here as well, the, the other side of this fence line is a big farm. And part of the thing there that we had a look at last week when we checked the job over, they've got massive piles of log, sta log stacks and they're a real favourite with, uh, with rats as well. In fact, we'll have a look at those in a moment. But the other thing that we've got up against us on this job is we've also got a cesspit. So what people think is, well, rats can't come out of a cesspit because they're not joined to the sewers. <laughs> this is why you need this pest interceptors. This here is the overflow out of the cesspit and that pipe there will go miles and miles and miles down that direction and it'll empty into a brook somewhere believe it or not when a cesspit is full to the brim what can happen is the rats can come up that pipe from i think they said it was about two miles away there this one empties and they'll walk all the way up there jump into the next pipe and then they can when the cesspit is full to the brim they can swim across the top and out the other side so <laughs> Yes, rats can come out of cesspits. Don't believe everything you look at on Google. Also on this job, we've got this big concrete slab and we can see under the concrete slab, the rats are living underneath here now because it's been going on for quite a while. You can see just there now, that's all trodden down. Uh, in fact, let's go and have a quick look at those log stacks. And here we are, and you know, I was mentioning about the log stacks, so as you can see, vast. <laughs> absolutely huge i'd love one of these myself to keep my log burners going but you can see under here look there's so many rats going underneath there and they'll love to live in between all those logs and they'll just bring in some uh, some hay and bedding materials maybe out of our even out of our customers lofts and bring it all the way back down here put it in between all the logs and then they've got a lovely nest so that's why they love a log store but let's get back around to our customers I thought this might be a little bit of interest to you. These are a massive version of what goes on underneath your house. So these are the old ceramic coated clay pipes. Uh, these are a massive version of it. But basically where you've got this lip here, 
So this pipe here has got the same and the ones underneath your house has got the same. And these have probably been under your house for 100 years, 200 years. They're very, very brittle now. So any movement in the buildings will crack them and pull and they'll start to break. Rats start chewing on them and over time uh, they'll just pop, pop a hole through or a whole piece can just drop out of them. Uh, then obviously the rats have got access underneath your houses. And the other thing that can happen is where you've got these lips, so that's how they fit together. So that pipe, if it was the same size, would fit inside there. And sometimes what happens over years and years, these will become displaced. So the one pipe will drop and the rats can come out over the top and over the top of here. When they lay these pipes under your house, they put them in a load of gravel in pea shingle. And over time again, that settles down because of vibrations and things and it leaves a lovely little channel it's pitch black under there but that channel one end of it will go to the outside of a manhole which is no good to the rats they'll turn back come this way and that will go under the lintels of your house and then they get into the cavity wall straight up into your loft and under your floors and that's why you hear them up there first let's go part of the problems that are happening on this job is we can you might be able to see there Ricky in fact I'm actually sinking here there's that many rat holes that I'm actually sinking that, that's one there look going down that way can you see that one at all yeah. well, that's massive isn't it going underneath the fence line there's another one there and like I say I'm actually sinking into this because there's that there's that many uh, rat holes and tunnels underneath here you can see them coming under the fence there as well look we're gonna actually see how bad this situation is and we're gonna put uh, annoyingly, a couple of our trail cams have given up the ghost this morning, and what we're going to do, we've only got one trail cam to use on this one, but part of the things that we've done, the rats as well, if you look here, it's almost like something out of a cartoon, isn't it, this one? But you can see they've been chewing there, and they've been going up inside our customer's workshop, but we, we have a little surprise for them. So when they go in there this time, they're going to meet an array of different of different traps we've got our trial cam over there and we've got an array of traps we've got our old trusty black cat rat traps and we've got your normal traps as well we'll see how they go on and always <laughs> licorice all sorts but also what we're going to be doing so we'll get that all locked up out of the way nice and safe so no non-target animals can get on there we're also going to be laying some of these outside Typically, we find a great success with these with our squirrels. You can see one of our squirrel videos. Uh, there's actually a playlist if you want to look at those. But these are called fen traps. They're a bit like the old-fashioned man traps that you used to see hanging up in pubs. Luckily, we can't trap men anymore. Uh, well, let's see. That might change the way things are, isn't it? Yeah, so they're a fen trap, and they're quite a vicious bit of kit, really. I could show you one. Here we go. I shall put a stick on there. I'll take the safety off. In fact, can I use that? So, safety off. So basically, the rat goes on there and... No more rat. So, it's quite an efficient, uh, efficient trap. But then we're also gonna be putting down outside some of these bait stations, which have got our normal rat traps in. So the, those are those. And we've also got a little area around here which is nicely nicely sheltered and we can see there's rats going up and down there so we're going to put some of those um the rat cat what they're called <laughs> black cat rat traps it really is a mouthful isn't it the only other thing that really is of interest in this job as you can see there's all the sheep again because it's all going on here how are you doing rick getting stuck in a tree mate so we've got the bird feeders here which is uh, Always a favourite of lots of vermin. But another favourite of rats is bamboo. And if we look down here, there's actually nice little nice little rat holes down there, look as well. Yeah, so the rats are going underneath here as well, look. Oh, and down this way. So that's how they could be getting into the house. So we don't know whether this is joined to the cesspit, we don't know whether it's joined to the... Because uh, there's a manhole the other side of that fence line as well that I forgot to mention. So this is a real head scratcher yet again, hence why we're doing the video. We hope you enjoy it and uh, we'll be back next week and we'll show you when we've set all the traps. 
So here we are loading up some bait stations. Very important you use secure bait stations. So there you go, there you go as your trap inside. But we always use a, a selection of trap of baits basically on whatever trap it is. Bird food, that's the best one because everyone loves feeding the birds and they love feeding squirrels, they love feeding rats, they love feeding everything they shouldn't be feeding. Chocolate spreads. A favourite, peanut butter, chocolate sauce. But like everything in pest control, you need to know which kind of baits to be using at which times of the year. And that's why we're so brilliant at what we do, because we know. Because we've been doing this for 10 years, believe it or not. So I'm going to get these baited up, we're going to get these put around the other house, Ricky, and then we'll be out of here and onto our next loft sanitation, which I'll be talking to you about in a minute. Oh, we've left that uh, rat-free lifetime guarantee times two because it was two houses and we're now off to another part of Worcestershire where we're going to be doing a loft sanitation and that's why I've got my hat on because it's the horriblest dustiest job we do but it's a great way to stop rats and mice and squirrels and other rodents picking up scent trails of lung gone infestations and encouraging them into your house if you'd like to see more about this, there is actually a playlist on our YouTube. If we've got the technology, you might find it here. There might be a link, or here, or here. I don't really know. But we'll be back on the rat-free lifetime guarantee in seven days' time, and we'll see what the activity is and what little hints and suggestions that the rats have given to us so we can make our customers rat-free and guarantee it for their lifetime. So as I was just saying when I put my uh, cap on to keep all the dirt out of my hair and beard, um, you might want to think about having this done. If you've gone through the rigmarole of having rats for years and years, um, this is a service that we supply. It's the loft sanitation service that we do. It's a big old job. But this is why you might want to. I've just spent the last 10 minutes taking these boards up. This has got the insulation out already. We've already taken all the insulation out everywhere else. We're still going to do a lot of hoovering. Uh, we've got to do a lot of cleaning, but let's have a look what we find underneath here. So this is what's going on in your insulation. So don't forget if you've had rats for years and years and years, let me show you what could be going on. Hidden away from sight, and I think that one caught as well. Lean it against them. There we go. Okay, so this was once all pristine insulation. I don't know they want to, uh, do to give me your torch and I'll light it up as we go. Yeah. So these are all little separate nests. This is all some plastic bags that the rats have brought in. It's come from that over there, the water tank. <laughs> oh yes, they've chewed that off the water tank. So these are all the little tunnel systems that they've built. And as the populations have grown, you can see where they've been taking poison. This wasn't a job that we'd done, but you can see where they've been eating the grain here, that blue colouring. That's off some poisonous grain that someone's put down. Look at that divot there. Yeah. You can see here as well, there's all the insulation balls that were in the in the cavity walls. And these rats will have been coming out of the sewers, I would no doubt. Like I say, it's just something you might want to think of. We won't do this until we make sure that we've got rid of your rats, basically, because this is a major horrible job. Once we've finished taking everything out of here, we hoover it from top to bottom and then what we do is we spray it with a special biocide which basically kills all scent trails because it gets rid of all the bacteria, protozoa, viruses, you name it, it kills it. And then we'll put your insulation back down for you if you want as well, like we'll do on this one. So just something to think about. Can you show them that rat over there? Oh, right there. I should have put that in one of the tunnels, shouldn't I? And here's, here's something we found in one of the tunnels over there. <laughs> it's an old rat. Lovely thing, isn't it? And as we've been pulling out the insulation I was just showing you, this is actually the nest that, this is the old nest. Goes back quite a way, quite a way. And here we have what we call a latrine point underneath here. Millions and millions of droppings. And I'll just keep going to exactly the same place 
They've been hiding their little poos away until we get these piles of poo. But we're going to hoover it all up now and put it in the skip. So here we are. Now we've got all the insulation out, all the droppings, mouse droppings, rat droppings, everything. You can still see there's a little bit of stainage from the rat's urine and things like that. But we've sprayed with the biocide now, which kills all the uh, bacteria and fungus and everything else that, that was growing in here, which in turn creates scent trails. It's actually, the stuff itself doesn't actually smell. It's the bacteria that's in the poo and the urine that smells. So when we kill the bacteria, it doesn't smell anymore. But we've got it all up anyway. So the next thing is, we're gonna get this brand new fresh insulation in. Let's get on. And that is one loft sanitation done and all the insulation in it. Lovely, clean. And not a rat dropping or a mouse dropping in sight. Don't forget, have a look at our loft sanitation page on our website. Back again. As you probably noticed, I've had a bit of a trim. We've just quickly checked all the traps that we put down. We put the traps down for the rats. Caught one rat. We was expecting more, but the truth of the matter is we are properly in the countryside. And what there is lots of around fields is field mice. And basically all our traps and all the boxes that we've put out, the only thing that's in there is no bait left on the treadles, uh, on the traps, and little droppings that have been left by field mice. We're not here for field mice, we're here to stop the rats. And if the field mice get to the traps before the rats do, they'll clear all the bait off and the rats have got no intention of going in there. We did catch one, and we've got a bit of footage to look at as well. But really, our mission here today is trying to stop, find, trying to work out where these rats are coming from. And that means we're doing a survey. Now, this one's a bit of an interesting one. And the reason we're doing the filming on this one is we've got cesspits, septic tanks. Uh, we've got old stuff. This is, seems to be new stuff. This seems to be older than God's dog. Uh, in fact, just here, you can see how many field mice there are. <laughs> in fact, if you look here, look, Rick, you can see there's a little root going in, in underneath this. I don't know why this has been left here. And another one there where there's no grass. And that kind of tells me that underneath here, you can see the little, little roots in, look, and there's a little nest of field mice. In fact, you can see some of the little free offerings there, look, the nuts that they've taken. They're almonds, off, off an almond tree, look, and they've eaten that. I'm not even going to disturb them, I don't think, because inside there, there might be a little family of them. But, like I say, we're not here for uh, killing for killing's sake, and if we can get away without killing even a rat, that's a good thing. Uh, let's go and have a look at one of the manholes. In fact, we'll show you in a minute when we're down the manhole with the camera. So you might remember that just over the other side of that wall is the bamboo and there's some rat holes coming out from in the bamboo. Now rats do love bamboo, something I wouldn't plant in my garden in all honesty because uh, it's a great hidey hole for all kinds of vermin and things like that. But uh, also I've got a funny feeling that this pipe here out of this manhole is going to be going under that wall and that could be where the rat ingress point is so let's have a look at what we find down here what's that in the bottom looks like a piece of pipe or something what the hell's that oh i've gone over it well managed to get a load of pull back out not too far what the hell is all this hair by the looks of it is okay it smells like the kind of stuff that blocks your drains up at home that does <laughs> right let's try again so i can get over it again I've got a funny feeling that that's someone has had the drains rod rodding people out. Has it gone over? Yeah. Yeah. I reckon that's a drain, Roderick. Yeah. I'd say so. That's, yeah. And there's the joint, look, because, uh, just bring it back to me, the camera. So that there, I think, when you've got the drain rods, they come in a metre length and they're like black plastic usually. 
and at each end there's a brass fixing where you screw them in together and I think that's been left under there for years um, why they would have left it there it's probably got jammed into something and that could actually be a break and instead of telling whoever they was paying them to come out and jet, unblock their drains I've just gone oh, just say we've done it and bugger off like <laughs> that's what's happened isn't it they must have done unless it was a, good, a person who's done it themselves but look at all the stuff collecting on it how that's not got blocked I do not know that's a major problem isn't it the only way you're going to get that out is by pulling it from this end I could try how far down the actual well I can't get any further with that can I I'm going to get stuck I ain't getting stuck behind that because someone couldn't pull it out God knows how many years ago. And that would, and if you think about it, say that's got the plunger on the end of that. So you've got the rod and on the end of it, you've got like a, a, a plastic, a rubber bung basically, which is about the same size as the pipe. And as they push that down there, if there's a broken pipe, what can happen is that can pop through the broken pipe. And when you come to pull it back, you're pulling that through a hole and this part will get stuck inside. And it might be one of those jobs where we're so certain that there's an issue down there, we don't actually have to see the issue. Um, but without the camera, you're never going to tell, really. Uh, so this is already becoming a really interesting kind of, well, as drain surveys go, <laughs> we could say it's interesting. But let's see what we can find down these other ones as well, Rick. So this one. I can almost feel some bad build practice coming along in a, in a second. Oh, there you go. That's a big enough gap. <laughs> there, look. Yeah. So this part here, that's well big enough to get your thumb through. And if you can get your thumb through, a foot long rat can get through that hole. And that will be how rats are getting out of this system and up and into the walls. We'll also go through here in a minute because a lot of people will be going, but how on earth, but it's a septic tank, it's not joined to the sewers and all the rest of it. It doesn't really matter because where, where that septic tank goes and empties out to, which will be a brook somewhere or God knows where, it could be miles and miles away, it won't really make any difference because a rat jumps in the end of the pipe, tootles up. When the cesspits are full, okay, what happens, they come through the overflow pipe, jump into the pooey water and swim across pop out the other side and then get into your sewerage system. And that's why a lot of the time people on septic tanks, they'll only get them periodically and they can't work out why. And when I say to them, when did you have your septic tank clean? And then all of a sudden my brain starts going, ah, I know where these rats are coming from. But yeah, we'll carry on with the server and we'll keep you updated. If anything else exciting happens, two pipes, two problems so far. Let's carry on. Same manhole, different issues. So now we're going, so we know we've got issues on this pipe going underneath that building there with the, uh, someone's, <laughs> some unscrupulous person in the past has left a, a rod down there, a drainage rod. We've also got issues on this pipe here. Um, then we've just started pushing underneath this building. And as we go in underneath, we can see, you can see the pipes on here, look. And then this pipe that we're coming into, you can actually see just here, there's an actual part of the pipe missing, look. See all the cracks? Crack, 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 and that bit of the Lego, that bit is missing. But then as we pushed a little bit further down, so that's another issue that needs sorting out by our expert ways. Then we go down here, and then we've got another pipe coming off the top, look. <laughs> now, you would have thought that that was joined to this outside toilet here, and it's got absolutely nothing to do with it. Uh, we've flushed every toilet in the house, we've, flushed the, we've run every tap in the house and this, I think, there used to be a toilet here and they've got rid of the old building, capped it off, well not capped it off, rats can just walk up here straight out, out of there underneath the, the concrete slab of the new building and they'll find their way over years and years up and into the houses and that's what's probably happening here. But that's just one manhole and I think Four issues, five issues, just off this one manhole. Nothing new there then, you say? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see what we find off round by the cesspit now. I think we've solved the problem on this one. We've got a few more things to check, but we'll find out later. This 
here's your septic tank or cesspit or whatever you want to call it that's an old one uh, it's disused now in fact i will put the camera down a couple of pipes off that as well just in case but this is the way it works so that pipe there going out of here goes all the way off down in that direction somewhere downhill all the way down to a river or a brook or something it empties out into um, and that's really only supposed to ever be used when the cesspit is overfilled and it's the overflow but what happens is mr and mrs rat they see a nice pipe that smells a bit of poo and they think to themselves oh i wonder where this goes and that pipe could be two miles ten miles down there and they'll tootle along and i think oh finding little bits of food as they go um and then at a certain point they'll come out into here and they'll get out of that pipe and they'll jump into that pipe and now that pipe goes into here rick so you wouldn't want to fall in there would you no. and basically once this is filled up though once this is full to the brim and it needs emptying and sucking out basically into one of the containers um the rats can get out of that pipe swim across here and then as you can see they can swim into that pipe there now that pipe there joins into here now there's no issues between there and here the issues are right the way up there in our house the rats could be making a two mile journey up there out of there swim across all the poo water in the cesspit when it's full then they get out the other side they come up here and they go down these different pipes and then basically they found all the issues we've already shown you and then the rats get in your house and unless you stop this part happening you ain't going to stop that part happening so we know what we're going to do now on this side of the building anyway <laughs> another rat free lifetime guarantee going into service and doing what it needs to do okay the plot thickens even a little more because as you know we've got rats coming up out of the ground here and that other manhole that we've started surveying from where we found what we thought was a rodding uh, not a rodding eye a drain rod to unblock a blockage at some point well that's literally just there and if you think about it we went up there literally what about three feet a meter up the, up the first pipe and we found the back end of the rodding the drain rod and that was over there and then we found a rodding eye on this property so here's a rodding eye where perhaps they should have used the rodding <laughs> the drain rods from and as we've pushed down there we can actually see that's the end that there of the 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 drain rod you can see the black plastic of the drain rod there and that's gone all corroded at the end where it's a, the metal attachment so that must be from here to there there must be a good Three meters and the rest, meters, six meters. meters I'd say. Yeah. Six or seven meters of drain rod down there that have been left by some unscrupulous drain rodder. <laughs> hmm. But the great thing is we now know, even though the drain rod is in the way and we can't get the camera past it, and we daren't just in case we get the head of our camera stuck, it doesn't matter because we know that that's one end of the drain rod and the other drain rod is in there, and that's all joined to the same system. So that's how those rats are getting out there on those breaks we found from that side and they're coming out they're getting underneath this uh, favors and they're coming up and they're popping out underneath that bamboo and that's what's happening there how this hasn't got blocked over the years is beyond me but there you go awesome job sorted this is one of the reasons that we really really don't want to be using rodenticides otherwise known as poisons basically for rats mice and things like that number one you shouldn't be using poison on anything other than house mice or rats norwegian rats in the uk it would be illegal to do so we're part of the crru which is the campaign for reasonable rodenticide use i believe and this is the reason why though so field mice this is a field mouse you can tell it's got a white belly long tail big ears kind of cute little beastie uh, if they get in your house, there's not going to be a massive amount of them, so we can clear them up with traps and stopping them getting in your house. But these little guys here, these, you can see they've got little tiny stubby tails. Oh, they're so cute. But these are voles. You can tell they've got they're a bit gingery coloured. They've got a little stubby face. They're really cute, aren't they? Little stubby tail look. So these are voles. I think they're field voles. 
they are basically the number one food source for barn owls, uh, followed closely by field mice. So that's why you shouldn't be using rodenticides and that's why we don't use rodenticides unless it's under specific circumstances. It's one thing to kill a vole or a, or a field mouse with a trap, totally different kettle of fish when you kill it with poison and something else eats it. So don't do it, get the professionals in. Oh, they are cute. I hate killing things some days, you know. Yeah. Well, most days. Every day I hate killing things. But it was quick. And you should keep out the rat trap, shouldn't they? Come on. This should be our penultimate uh, visit to this site, hopefully. Because what we've found, you can probably see here, we've got rat holes all over the place. Look, uh, there's another one there, another one there, another one behind me. But we've had a camera, we've had a camera set up, hopefully we've got the footage and we'll show you now. We've had a camera set up here and we've been watching. Now don't forget, the last time we were here we did the survey on the cesspits and all the rest of it. And we've actually fitted a rat flat where it needs to be fitted. And that means the rats can't get back out of the way that they used to come from. With the pest interceptors we're always extra careful on everything that we do, we double check everything. So what we did, we left a load of traps down. All we found in the traps is dead mice and field, uh, field mice and uh, field voles. We've had the camera here, that's found no rats either. So we think, we think, we're pretty sure we've solved the problem for this, these customers. Even though it's outside, even though it's in the, in the countryside, it just goes, it goes to show you, you don't need to live with rats. It's a fallacy, people, we hear it all the time. I live in the countryside, I've got to live with rats. No, you haven't, no, you haven't. No one's got to live with rats. And you know why you've got to, got to live with rats? Because all you've got to do is ring up the pest interceptors and ask us for our rat-free lifetime guarantee and we'll sort it out for you. But what we're going to do today, we're going to take all the traps away because all we're catching is field mice. We're going to fill in all the holes and then we're going to come back in a week's time and we're going to see if the, the holes have re reopened. Uh, if they have, obviously there's still rats here. That's job's done. From experience and 10 years plus with me, that is. I think this is job done. Keep you in. Let's see. Let's get all these traps out of the way then and uh, these holes filled back in. There's another, what's left of a field mouse. Oh, that's a bit gross, isn't it? No rats, that's the important thing. That's why we're here, for rats. Okay, Rick, let's get these tidied up then. And I'm glad to report that this is the final visit. The rats, if you remember, were coming from a cesspit, which is next door. And they were coming up from a, wherever that opens out to, probably a brook or something, a couple of miles away. Coming up that, into the septic tank, or the cesspit, across the top of that, into the drainage from the two houses. And then where they were getting out, the main place, if we look here, Rick, you can see that's a red brick. That's the normal colour of it, look. A red brick. But this is all filthy dirty, with the, where the rats have been crumbing out of the, the broken pipe all the time. So one of the things we did last week was we could we filled it all back in so this was a lovely big hole here and now there's no hole whatsoever we've just got to go and check over the other side of the garden where there was another load set up let's go and have a quick look now rick and we'll just have a quick check here as well and here where we've got these bits of plastic just to mark where the holes were there's no holes so these are all big holes if you remember off the video last week we are glad to say that this person now they've got their rat free lifetime guarantee here and next door they are rat free for the rest of their lives all they've got to do if a rat turns up again if these re these holes reopen up the more they see a rat in the garden or they hear a rat up in the loft they just get on the phone give us a call and we're straight back out to come and sort the problem out but we do the job so well it's very rare that's ever going to happen it's only there for your safety thank you for watching